do calories in, calories out truly trump all when it comes down to intermittent fasting? There's a lot of people on the internet that'll tell you that intermittent fasting is only triggering you to burn fat and lose weight because you're consuming less calories than you would be ordinarily. Now, although that's interesting and quite frankly, mostly true, there are some additional things that we have to look at in terms of molecular changes that occur within the body when we're intermittent fasting. Hey, if you haven't already, I wanna make sure that you subscribe to my channel. New videos every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. And also make sure you hit that little bell icon so you can know whenever I go live or post new videos. So when we look at how the body burns fat, we have to understand that there are more things to consider than thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is calories in versus calories out. And although I will be the first person to say that that is a very important process, it is not the end all be all. There's a lot of science that is starting to show some other things. You see, we know from science that thermodynamics are important, but we also know that thermogenesis is important. You see, thermogenesis is where your body creates body heat. It's just like if you were to have an increase in body temperature, your body's gonna oxidize more fat. So if you were naturally sitting at a higher body temperature, you would probably burn more fat than someone that isn't sitting at as high of a body temperature. This is thermogenesis. Now we also have the thermic effect of food. Okay, every time you eat, your body actually has to increase its core body temperature to process that food. But what if I told you that there's some science that proves that intermittent fasting actually improves your thermogenesis level even without any effect of food in the system. So in order to totally understand this, we have to understand what brown fat is and what white fat is. I'm gonna make this kind of short because I wanna get to the meat of this video because at the end of this video, I'm gonna reference a study that'll completely solidify exactly what I'm saying. Okay, so we have brown fat and white fat. White fat is known as white adipose tissue, or WAT, and that is basically just the fat that insulates your body. It doesn't really do anything else other than provide you with a little bit of insulation. It has very, very little blood flow. Then we have brown fat. Okay, brown fat is literally brown in color because it has more blood flow. And it's the purpose of brown fat to actually increase your body's temperature. Okay, brown fat is there to keep you warm. It's metabolically active. Whereas white fat just kind of chills on you and just adds a layer of fat and insulation so that if you're in the cold, you're protected. So brown fat is what we want because it's gonna allow you to burn some more fat. But now with the recent research, we're starting to see that we can actually switch over some of the white fat over to brown fat. And I'll get to that in just a second. You see, a lot of the whole process of this entire thing comes down to something known as vascular endothelial growth factor. I'm gonna to refer to it as VEGF for the rest of this video. VEGF is a substance that triggers the growth of new blood vessels. This growth of new blood vessels is known as angiogenesis. And the growth of new blood vessels is very, very important when it comes down to fat burning, but it's also important when it comes down to cell survival in the first place. You see, usually VEGF is produced whenever we're under stress. I can give you a simple example. If a muscle or a barrier of the body is deprived of oxygen, it's going to increase its levels of VEGF to that portion of the body so that it can grow new blood vessels and get new oxygen. So a simple example is if you're working out at an extreme, extreme intensity, you're gonna be deprived of oxygen to a certain degree. What that means is that your body has no choice but to do its best to release more VEGF to produce more blood vessels so you can deliver blood and consequently oxygen to that area of the body. This is critical. Now, what again, science is starting to show is that fasting may increase the levels of VEGF. And I'll explain that again in one second. So if you start putting things together, if you have an increase in VEGF, you could conceptually allow more blood vessels to be created in the fat, which means that you could conceptually turn white fat into brown fat. So this is all theory until we start talking about some science and a legit study. So this study was published in the Journal of Cell Research. And it's a relatively new study. It was published at the end of 2017. And although the study was done on mice, it's still very, very relevant. So what this study did is it wanted to take a look at over 16 weeks, what would happen to mice if they were fasting in a two days off, one day on fashion, and what it would do with their overall body weight, but what it would also do to their overall fat stores, but also their vascular endothelial growth factor levels. So what they did is they broke them down and they had them fast just one day on, and then they would not fast for two days. So this is the kind of style that I prefer anyway. If you watch my other videos, this is always what I'm talking about. I'm not a big proponent of fasting every single day. So the reason that they did this with this study is they figured that if they had them fast for one day and then not for two days and then one day again, it would allow them to measure the results 
absent of any kind of caloric deficit. So basically, they were trying to see, okay, let's look at the results here at a molecular level without worrying about the calorie deficit. Because with two days off of fasting and one day on, you're allowing the body enough time to come back to homeostasis, and you're not just dealing with the thermodynamics effect. Okay, so what they found at the end of 16 weeks was that, of course, the mice that were in the intermittent fasting group ended up losing quite a bit more weight. And they ended up losing quite a bit more body fat, too. So not just weight loss, but body fat loss. This is already something that we probably know. I've referenced a multitude of studies before that prove that just by changing your eating window and what time you eat, you can burn more fat. But this study took it a little bit further. They found that fasting increased a specific type of white blood cell. In this case, it's known as an M2 macrophage. And the best way that I can describe this is if you have a fever, if you're sick, if you have the flu, you're having an increase in specific macrophages, white blood cells, and that's going to cause you to have a fever. It's a feverish response. It's a simple immune response. And that's going to cause you to burn some fat because thermodynamics are at play. Now, I'm not saying that you go out and get the flu to try to burn fat, but what if we can activate that same kind of pathway in a true healthy fashion? Well, that's what this study found was occurring. These white blood cells would increase, triggering a specific response to fat cells that would cause them to generate heat. And this is all a result of an increase in that VEGF that I talked about earlier in the video. So fasting improved the levels of vascular endothelial growth factor, proving that fasting was literally able to take the white adipose tissue and turn it into metabolically active brown adipose tissue. That brown adipose tissue that literally helps you burn fat. So this study concluded that intermittent fasting, even in a two-off, one-on fashion, was legitimately able to be a therapeutic approach to obesity and to fat loss in the first place. So now, intermittent fasting is actually being looked at through the medical community to be able to be a way that people can truly activate their metabolism in a different fashion. Oh, and to make matters even better, they found that the vascular endothelial growth factor levels elevated after just one single day of fasting. So all it took was one day of intermittent fasting before that white adipose tissue was able to migrate over to becoming brown adipose tissue that was metabolically active. So the purpose of this video wasn't to try to defeat all the people out there that say it's only calories in, calories out that matter. Honestly, I'm in agreement with them for the most part. But we have to start looking at science. It's always gonna be evolving. We're always gonna see new research that proves that it's not just as simple as calories in, calories out. Especially when you look at it through a wider lens. What is calories in, calories out? What is it? Is it a 24-hour measurement? Is it a 48-hour measurement? Is it a one-week measurement? The fact is, calories in, calories out can be looked at multiple different ways. And if you're not fasting for two days and then you're fasting for one day, sure, maybe overall your caloric intake is less. But the fact is, if you're only looking at it for 24 hours and saying you should consume X amount of calories per day, you're looking at it the entirely wrong way. We have molecular changes that are occurring, and that is what is making us who we are and allowing us to burn more fat. As always, make sure you keep it locked in here in my videos. And if you have ideas for future videos, put them down in the comment section below. See you in the next one.